Good afternoon. Welcome to Midday Prayer on this sort of gloomy day. The sun keeps peeking out, but it doesn't stay out long, though the rain is welcome. My name is Mary Flecky, and I'm a member of the congregation here at Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lakeland, Florida. We are glad you are with us today as we join in prayer to uplift us to finish our week. Give yourselves a chance to breathe and relax as we spend this time together. I also ask that you lift up the parts of the world involved in conflicts. Pray for those innocents caught in the crossfire caused by the warfare between nations. Also pray for those caught in the natural disasters we've been having around the world and those that need God's healing touch. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light that shines perpetually. Be with us, Lord, in the tasks of this day. Your light shines over all. Let your light scatter any darkness and illumine your church and your people. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. In your hands are the caverns of the earth the heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded dry land. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are with us in this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purposes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our commemoration today is Henry Melchior Muhlenberg. He was a pastor in North America, and he died in 18, 1787. He was born Heinrich Melchior Muhlenberg, September 6, 1711, and died October 7, 1787, and he was a German-born Lutheran clergyman and missionary. He was born in Eisenbach, Germany, and immigrated to the province of Pennsylvania in response to demands for, from Lutherans for missionary work in the colony. Muhlenberg is considered the patriarch of the Lutheran Church in the United States. Muhlenberg and his wife, Anna Maria, had a large family, several of whom had a significant impact on, the, on colonial life in North America as pastors, military officers, and politicians. His and Anna Maria's descendants continued to be active in Pennsylvania and the national political life. Born in 1711 to Nicholas Melchior Muhlenberg and Anna Maria Kleinschmidt at Eisenbach, Germany, in the electorate of Hanover, he studied theology at the University of Göttingen. After completing his studies in the spring of 1738, Muhlenberg secured a teaching position at the Frank Foundation's Historic Orphanage. He was ordained in Leipzig in 1739 and served as assistant minister and director of the orphanage at Grossenersdorf from 1730, 
1739 to 1741. In 1741, he was encouraged to accept a call from the German-speaking Lutherans in Pennsylvania. Accordingly, in 1742, Muhlenberg immigrated across the Atlantic Ocean, where he essentially organized the Lutheran Church as an institution in North America. In 1742, as he immigrated to Philadelphia responding to their request, he took charge of the congregation at Providence, Augustus Lutheran Church, in what is now Trapp, Pennsylvania. He also provided leadership to a series of congregations from Maryland to New York, working to secure control over the less qualified pastors and starting new congregations among the settlers of the region. It sounds a little like Paul's letter to the Galatians. In 1748, he called together the Ministerium of Pennsylvania, the first permanent Luther Lutheran synod in America. He helped to prepare a uniform liturgy that same year and wrote basic tenets for an ecclesiastical constitution, which most of the churches adopted in 1761. He did much work on a hymnal, which was published by the Ministerium in 1786. The dedication stone of the Augustus Lutheran Church above its door is dedicated to Muhlenberg and the, its other founders. It reads in Latin translated to English, under the auspices of Christ, Henry Melchior Muhlenberg with his council erected from the very foundation this building dedicated by the Society of the Augsburg Confession, A.D. 1743. The name of the first church, Augustus, was adopted in honor of Hermann Augustus Frank, founder of the Hall Institutions, whose son Gotthilf had persuaded Muhlenberg to accept the call of the three united congregations in America. Muhlenberg frequently traveled between the three congregations assigned to him. During his 45-year ministry, he reached from New York to Georgia. He ministered not only to the German language populations he was assigned to, but also to colonists from the Netherlands and Britain as well in their native languages. Poor health forced him into limited activity and retirement. He eventually died at his home in Trapp, Pennsylvania at the age of 76. He was interred in the rear of the Augustus Lutheran Church with his wife, Anna Maria. Henry Malkier Muhlenberg is commemorated on August 7th in the Lutheran Book of Worship and in other religious texts of the United States and Canada. The Henry Melchior Muhlenberg House was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 2000. Our first reading is Psalm 23. If you've got this memorized, please join me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Together, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Our first reading is from the Song of Solomon, ch chapter 2, verses 10 through 13. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past and the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, 
and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Philippians 4, verses 1 through 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Iodia and I urge Syntech to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our reflection today, Iodia and Syntek are two women mentioned in only one short passage in the Bible. I plead with Iodia and I plead with Syntek to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life, from Philippians 4, verses 2 through 3. Iodia and Syntek had worked directly with Paul to spread the gospel throughout the city of Philippi. Although it is unclear in what manner, since they were obviously disagreeing with each other, The church had begun at a woman's prayer meeting, as we heard in Acts 16, 11 through 15, and it is possible that Iodia and Syntek were part of that original group. The one thing we know for sure is that these two women were at odds with each other. It is likely the public was an argument was a public one due to the fact that Paul heard about it even though he was currently in a Roman prison which means it was probably very public and probably caused by the fact that when we listen to things, no two people always hears it the same way. Two women fighting in this manner would have put the unity of believers in Philippi in jeopardy. So it was important for Paul to address the bickering in his letter to the church. Unity among believers is a common theme in the Bible. Paul himself spoke about unity in several of his letters. If you look at 1 Corinthians 1 through 1 verse, verse 10, Ephesians 4 verses 11 through 13, and Colossians 3:13 to 14. In fact, Paul's plea for addressing the problem was for each member of the church at Philippi to be united in helping Iodia and Syntec live peaceably with one another. Obviously, their argument was very public. Iodia and Syntec show that even those who have worked together for the cause of Christ can have disagreements. It also shows the importance of treating one another with love, compassion, and long-suffering. A church warring with itself is in danger of losing its testimony to outsiders. Iodia and Syntec 
needed to be of the same mind in the Lord. And the other church members were to do all that was necessary to heal the breach. They were all fellow laborers in the Lord's work. And their names were all part of the book of life. Because the church is made up of sinners like us, there will be times when division occurs. In these cases, scripture gives instructions on how to work towards peace. Some of those instructions were found in the very epistle sent to Eodia and Syntex Church. Paul says, Make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in the spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others, which is in Philippians 2, 2 through 4. Never does God's word allow for gossip, arguing, and fighting over personal matters in the church. Instead, believers are to encourage one another as we prepare for Christ's return. As the nations of the world should make an attempt to follow this example, we currently have two wars going on, one in Ukraine and one in Israel, and many more minor conflicts across the globe. How are we supposed to solve our own small conflicts when nations can't resolve theirs? When one side calls the other animals? We are all humans. Some of us do bad things, sometimes for what we perceive as good reasons. All our lives, we have heard the other side saying, God is on our side. How do we determine this? I'm not sure, but I'm guessing what God wants from us is to do the things that are for the greater good, not just our own good. The 23rd Psalm is particularly pertinent now. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. We have to trust this is true, and as David says, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Come, Lord, come down. Come in, come among us. Come as a wind to move us. Come as a light to prove us. Come as a night to rest us. Come as a storm to test us. Come as a sun to warm us. Come as a stillness to calm us. Come, Lord, come down. Come in, come among us. To God the Father who created the world. To God the Son who redeemed the world. To God the Holy Spirit who sustains the world. Be all praise and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, you have always given bread for the coming day. And though I am poor, today I believe. Lord, you have always given strength for the coming day. And though I am weak, today I believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day. And though I am anxious of heart, today I believe. Lord, you have always kept me safe in trials. And now, tried as I am, today I believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day. And though it may be hidden, today I believe. Lord, you have always lightened this darkness of mine. And though shadows are here, today I believe. Lord, you have always spoken when the time was ripe. And though I don't always hear your voice, today I believe.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, the government and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of the church, for this assembly, and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of all, the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you. Through Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending. By paths yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love. Make haste to do kindness. Shower abundant hospitality on friend and stranger. Walk in justice, and you may follow the path of mercy and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Let us go then in peace. Amen.